Welcome to Simply Cyber Live, where we dive deep into the digital abyss of cybersecurity, illuminating the pathways of modern defense. Today, we're privileged to sit down with an absolute legend in the field, Stan Golubchik. This guy is the CEO of the leading cybersecurity form, ContraForce, and he was absolutely forged in the fires of security operations. We're going to pull back the curtain on cutting edge developments, explore innovative solutions, and delve into the future of information protection and definitely looking at hyper automating Microsoft. If you've ever wondered about the vanguard of cyber defense, you're in for an absolute treat. So plug in and power up because this is a conversation you won't want to miss. All right, we're joined by Stanley Golubchik, founder and CEO of ContraForce, talking today at Black Hat 2023. So uh, Stan, before we get into it, can you tell us a little bit about your journey into cybersecurity and what led you to create ContraForce and why the focus on democratizing cybersecurity? Yeah, Jerry, it's great to be here. Thanks for the time and the opportunity to speak with you. So I've actually been in this space for about over 15 years. Um, started actually on the operator side on the network as a operation center lead within the network and the NOC. Um, and then I got the chance to get into Intel Security, was there for a few years in McAfee for quite some time. Um, through that whole journey, I was doing things from solution architecture work, helping work with security operations centers, building them out, and helping deliver that as a technology service offering to large system integrators, service providers, and global SOCs. Um, after that, I actually uh, helped drive a lot of alliances, growth, and strategic relationships at a company called Armor Cloud Security, which they did manage detection response. Mm -hmm. Um, so through that whole process, you know, we saw things that are pretty well known in the industry, which is security complexity, right? Yeah. Um, but the main thing was that that security complexity was actually impacting directly the security operators, the security analysts, the security engineers, too much data, too many threats. How do I stay ahead of it? Right. Which then leads to things like attrition and burnout. So we wanted to be able to find a way to be able to make their life easier, but mm -hmm. actually allow them to be more effective. Right. And so when we start talking about democratizing cybersecurity, it's, re it's really about taking the individuals that need the help the most and then allowing them to essentially be a force multiplier with technology that enables their process. So it's really about accessible cybersecurity and then creating, the way I like to say it, a new cyber defense workforce. Oh, I love that. And alert fatigue really is... Uh, the bane of all SOC analysts existence, almost yeah. to the point of like apathy. Yeah. So, so I love that you're doing that. Uh, so your platform promises to make cybersecurity operations simple and empower entry level defenders. Uh, how does this work in practice? And can you provide us with like a real world scenario to kind of illustrate it? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, we do have right now a large focus in Microsoft. So we work with service providers that have some kind of practice that circulates around the Microsoft ecosystem. That could be cloud transformation, IT operations. There's a few use cases. What we end up finding is that we actually had one customer, they were in a, a managed service provider, MSP, that was trying to essentially deliver more advanced SOC capabilities because their customers were demanding it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was still very infant. So what we end up seeing is that just them being able to operationalize things like Microsoft Sentinel was not an effective process. And in fact, it probably took them you know two to three days on average to do a full-on security investigation, triage, and then do full remediation with confidence to conclude that it is bad or it's not bad. Mm -hmm. When we actually started working with them, we started seeing that actually an average mean time to respond drop down to about 30 to 60 minutes. So massive increase of operational efficiency, but then of course they're securing their customers and meeting their service level agreements that they actually say they can deliver. Yeah, I, I love that. That's and that's like something that you know the CISO or the SOC manager can actually show to the business because they get numbers, right? Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Uh, cybersecurity as a field is you know obviously filled with complexities. What's the biggest challenge you learned facing the journey of simplifying cyber ops, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, I think the challenge really was it kind of goes back to as I mentioned the predicating issue of complexity, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you look at a SOC team how much they have to do to be able to not only understand the technologies that they use internally, but also their customers use that they manage. Um, that is a very high level, right? The bar itself. Um, but furthermore, how do I learn in an iterative process of my workflow, right? So as an analyst today, you see a lot of teams, they're being compensated in terms of how many tickets I can close. But that is not a quantifiable metric. That's actually uh, quality, right? So the quality side of it is really about not just how many tickets I close, but 
What is it that I'm actually closing? And then what am I actually learning off of that process? So I think that big challenge is the disconnect between the operator who sits in front of the screen, who makes the determinations, kind of the human in the feedback loop, right? Mm -hmm. And then the security engineering team as well that supports them to be able to say, how do we increase the efficacy of our tools? How do we reduce the risk for our SOC and also the customers that we manage? And then how do we deliver better SLAs? And especially as a SOC manager, like you mentioned, I always worry about what are my SLAs, how fast am I responding, how effective is my response, and then what can I do to increase that process? Yeah, and and you know, ticket closing is kind of like not the right incentive because then you might get you know a partial investigation, and you know I feel like it's fine, let's close because we got to keep our metrics. Uh, so I, I love that they're more effective. Plus, it feels good too. Like when you when you investigate to completion, like you have that sense of you know accomplishment or success. I love exactly. that. So one aspect that stands out is your focus on hyper automation from Microsoft. Can you elaborate on why this specific focus and how does your solution integrate with and augment the existing security tools that are already out there, especially if a CISO is already bought into something? Yeah. So when we look at the market, uh, a large percent of the market itself is Microsoft Shop, right? Um, probably around 60, 70%, right? Just rough numbers. Yep. They use Office 365. They use those tools that come in E3, E5 or Business Premium. So they have these things, but then how do we help them realize the value by turning them on, but also making sure when they are turned on, they're working effectively. Um, Where we see also a big opportunity is the fact that a lot of these customers are just starting their Microsoft security journey, right? Um, And for them, it's kind of an easier area to access because, hey, we have a a vendor that we can go to that we can trust that have best of breed technologies. Um, We might have some peripheral technologies and other vendors in there, and that's fine. We need to support that. But we're seeing a big gap where if you have, for example, a customer that has an E5, are they turning on something that provides them advanced threat detection response, i.e. Sentinel? They don't, right? Because they don't have the resources, you know, the security engineers, they don't have the cloud DevOps expertise. So what ends up happening is that this very advanced solution it sits on the sidelines, collects dust, and they never get the full value of that Microsoft ecosystem that they're currently invested into. So that's where we come in and say, let us simplify that process for you and get you going quickly. Yeah, and <laughs> I agree. It's it is funny how Microsoft kind of bundles things, so you end up buying buying these tools and not have them. And then obviously through the the blades, there's like the easy button to turn mm-hmm. on, but certainly you need to tailor it and and, and tune it so it works effectively. Uh, you had mentioned maximizing the use of your security tools that are already in place. Uh, can you share some key insights or strategies that you found effective uh, for this in your journey so far? Yeah. So I think it's a great question. Um, you know, I think what I've seen and, you know, our team has seen substantially at scale is that there's a lot of duplicative efforts. So we see that organization is buying overlapping tools. Mm-hmm. And you have to ask yourself, and you had mentioned this, right, Jerry, is the idea of that you have all these false positives or you have a lot of alerts and you have a lot of noise. And usually that's just because you're not fine tuning your risk model and your proper defense across your tax surface. And what ends up happening is that, and you know, you, you hear the statistic all the time, enterprises have 76 tools on average, right? Mm-hmm. And that's just because they say, hey, we got money, we can throw it at the problem. Let's just put throw more spaghetti at the wall, put more tools in place, and then we hopefully can be more secure, right? So that, that in itself is just a complete misnomer. So we have to focus on the tool that you have now, identify if it has strong efficacy from a detection response perspective, and then eliminate other stuff, cut the fat out essentially. Yeah. yeah. Well, and <laughs> unfortunately, that's another kind of like a misaligned incentive for CISOs because if they buy a new product, they get six months of life because they have a yeah. project implementation plan and oh, I'll report on the metrics afterwards. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, so considering the myriad of threats you know that organizations face today, how does ContraForce's platform help businesses defend themselves more effectively? Yeah. So the great thing about ContraForce, um, the hyper automation piece is pretty critical for us. And just quickly explain what that is. When you look at hyper automating something like a cloud based security platform such as Sentinel, um, you need a few things in place to make it actually work. And so you kind of get that high degree of advanced th- threat detection response. You need security content development. So that's really detection engineering mm-hmm. and response engineering. So by hyper automating the, those functions, what we actually have built is AI capabilities is when you're using ContraForce, you don't have to ever write a rule again. You don't have to write a response action or logic workflow. We take care of that. And so the way it works is by you interfacing with the interface 
it's learning by reinforced learning human feedback. So as you take an action, it'll tell the system in the front end that rule worked or didn't work. And this is how we actually make it more efficient going forward. So it's an enclosed feedback system. And so what that ends up doing over time is you get more robust detection capabilities, you get better coverage. And now you can start shifting to more proactive defense rather than reactive. So that's a lot of the automation that we've built in. So it's really focused today on driving incident reanimation simplicity, and then kind of going back to the front of it to say what triggered that response workflow in the first place, and then let's make that better. Yeah, I, I love the idea of moving to proactivity. I mean, that's kind of the dream. Um, one, one question I had as a follow-up um, with MSPs that might have different clients that have, you know, you'd want detection rules for different situations. Yeah. So it may not be a one size fits all. How does ContraForce ad address that? Yeah, it's great. And it really never is one, right? When we have, <laughs> you know, deployments with providers that have over hundreds of different organizations they have to monitor. Not only do I have to implement, you know, something like a Sentinel at scale, uh, and then I have to figure out how to standardize it, right? Um, but that's kind of a catch-22 because when you standardize, then, you know, it's a cookie cutter model mm -hmm. and that doesn't work because as you mentioned, one customer in one vertical, right? Financial services versus healthcare, they're going to have very different risk appetite. So you have to cater and customize to that. So it's really important that we implemented something. We have our own CI CD pipeline and we call it our content management system, CMS, that keeps all this content available on tap through DevOps principles. So our SOCs or MSPs can access this content and then it can customize over time with the hyper automation. So they don't have to write any of this content or develop the repositories. We make it very simple for them to be able to tap into it and then leverage it per specific customer use case. That's awesome. I, I love that you're like, not just reducing complexity, but you're also reducing kind of subject matter expertise time in the seat. So more junior level engineers can can be begin delivering cyber risk reduction to the business. That's that's really cool. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit today about struggles that SOCs have. What are some of the most common pain points that you've seen orgs deal with in their SOC ops? And how does ContraForce address those pain points? Yeah. So I'm going to take you back real quickly, kind of the predicating genesis of why we wanted to start ContraForce. <laughs> okay. And a lot of it was because, you know, I mentioned my background and we know the things that I saw that were big challenges. But if you really look at the lowest common denominator, it's the security engineering aspect. We wanted to automate security engineering. Um, that's a very difficult task because you have to have an amalgamation of all these skill sets bring into one single person. And they also have to be a good communicator, project manager, and do things to ensure that when I work with my analysts and they give me feedback, I take that feedback and I actually apply it effectively. And it goes both ways. So for us, it's really about saying, don't worry about finding these people that number one are hard to find. They're very expensive and likely they're going to also be poached or they're going to leave. Right. Right. And that's the security engineer. So that hyper automation again applies to that security engineering principle, which is, do I find a threat? How do I map the threat to a det detection or analytic rule? And then how do I map a response aspect to it every single time? And that's where we actually cross that chasm and we connect the wires and we automate that process entirely. So we see customers actually like MSPs, for example, they don't even have to have security engineers. We can completely offset that requirement for them. That's awesome because I definitely know detection engineering is a more advanced skill. And you typically see someone who has either been in the SOC for a long time or a pen tester that's, you know, flipped their badge and become blue, being really the only ones who are truly super effective at good detection engineering. So it, it, again, it's nice that, you know, based on this solution that you're, <laughs> you're actually making it more accessible and kind of, uh, what do you call it? Like a force multiplier of the amount of detection engineers, quote unquote, that you have at yeah. your disposal. Uh, the success of any company, really, including a cybersecurity company, is often closely tied to its ability to adapt and innovate. Uh, can you share about any like kind of recent or upcoming advancements in ContraForce's technology? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the our North Star primarily is really about also simplifying incident remediation. You know, you just had mentioned uh, detection engineering, right? Mm -hmm. um, while that's a high level skill set that is hard to find and hard to maintain, um, we we see some others in the space that are focusing on that, but we don't see a lot of focus on the automation and the response engineering. Mm -hmm. And that's really important, right? Because it's good to be able to find a threat or see a threat, but then how do I respond to the threat, right? And so right now that's just a full manual human and element aspect. While there's some automation workflows that you can use and technologies 
A matter of the fact is, is that it's a very disjointed process today. So we have to work on connecting those two things. So what we've done is we've been able to actually say, we've built our own multi-tenancy that you can take hundreds of different Sentinel instances and can connect them into one place. So that enterprise multi-tenant architecture is extremely effective for global organizations that have security operation practices. Uh, we also um, are and have rolled out a, this AI feedback loop. So we call it our gamebook engine. Mm -hmm. So gamebook essentially is aggregation of response actions that you can build together, but they're complex actions but you don't even have to be able to actually understand how to build them. We will give you that content and you essentially have to utilize a no code interface that you can draw, drag and drop this logic and run these remediation as aspects. But as you do that, the nice thing about ContraForce is we built the engine, which we released recently as well, that allows you and us to be able to capture your actions in real time, save that action, and then be able to repeat that same action every single time. So when you have one incident happen, that's fine. I need to look into it. But if I have that same incident, uh, occur two or three times, I probably need to figure out how to stop that from keep re being a repetitive process, right? Mm -hmm. So that game book engine allows you to be able to what we call solder the wire, which says, if I see this action, go ahead and just automate this and reduce this risk and remove the risk all entirely. So high automation, that aspect has been really helpful for us, but we're learning from the operators when they take these actions and it's really through metadata. And that allows us to be able to reinforce the logic that ContraForce provides to our end users. So uh, just from an implementation and operational perspective, because, you know, I, I I think from like the CISO seat, right? So yeah. like, okay, so I have E5 and, and like, I don't, I'm not using any of it and I, I want to like turn it on, right? With ContraForce, like what, what's that? I mean, without going into too much detail, what, what does that experience look like? I mean, is it a magic button I hit and like just put the, you know, the APIs in and off it runs or do I need, you know, is there a ramp up time with, you know, learning your environment? Like, I guess, what's the onboarding process? I'm curious. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, we actually call the whole uh, response thing. We call it the workflow rather. We call it one click response for a reason. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it's yeah. like, to your, it's like, let's just make it extremely simple and yeah. accessible. Uh, but the onboarding to your question, it's very streamlined. So onboarding today, average time is actually five minutes. Holy crap. So if you have a Sentinel, okay. for example, <laughs> you can use the Sentinel, but we see customers that have no work built in their Sentinel. So they put no connectors in, they've loaded no content in, and that's fine. We actually, since going back to the, what I mentioned, that CMS, we can push that content and deploy through automation and infrastructure as code. So you have an up and running optimized Sentinel instance in five minutes. My God, like I've like that's in that's stunning. You know, when I think of project implementation plans, I think like thirty days. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like or, or yeah. like faster if yeah. if it's a priority. So five minutes. That's that's really cool. So I guess just to kind of close out, Stan, um, this sounds like a really interesting product. Like, if someone is listening to this right now and wants to like learn more, like should they just go to contraforce.com or what? What's the best practice if someone wants more? Yeah, go to contraforce.com. Uh, we have an intake form. We're happy to give a f demo um, or just a trial for 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, you, obviously, you can try it before you buy it, and we're happy to work with you. Um, there's also some times that we see customers need a little bit more help on the onboarding, like with connectors and what have you. Mm -hmm. So we can do that. Um, so they also don't have to worry about the SOC piece because once again, you know, we're not doing the SOC service, right? So we do have partners that are certified Microsoft MSSPs and MXDR partners. Nice thing is that we can actually connect the customer with that MSSP if they do want that 24 seven SOC utilizing our technology. So there's that aspect, but yeah, you can find most of that information on the website and you can reach out to us um, and we'll be happy to help. That's awesome. All right. So Stan Golubchik, founder and CEO of ContraForce, talking with us today. Thanks so much, Stan. Oh, thank you. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you enjoyed the content and we'll see you in the next one.